I started riding motorcycles. I started out on a mini bike when I was a kid. If I don't ride, things look crappy. I have to ride. Every so often, an uh, urge just comes over me. I mean, people that ride, they just have to. You know, I gotta get out here. If I don't get out and ride, I'm not normal. You know, so it's a necessity for me to ride. That's just how it is. South on A1A, we go through this little town, Flagler, a place called Otis Castle. This guy, Rusty, is cool. He's really spiritual. I'd like to stop and show you this castle. It's really cool. Greetings and hallucinations. <laughs> What's going on, man? Long time no see. Yeah, man. Good to see you, man. Place looks great. Everybody, everybody doing good? You built this place yourself? Well, I worked with a uh, master mason named Otis Sadler, and he was born in 1936. Now we use no drawings, no sketches, no models, no laborers, no helpers. We started the project on May 1st, 1984, and we topped the building out in the summer of 1988. So it took us four years to top it out, and then the interior took an additional three years, and four and three is seven, that's the perfect number in the Christian Bible. This building always seemed to exert its own insistent will. It seemed more as if we were instruments. And of course, I can only speak for myself, but it seemed more as, as if we were instruments participating in the true process of the energy that was creating the structure because it was just such a natural, mellow, steady, organic flow to the whole thing. Oh, well, may we good. see the inside? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Let's take a walk around. Put the Star of David in here to illustrate that Jesus Christ was a Jewish rabbi. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament and Genesis is the first. And so that's what the symbolism there is on those two panels. And what does that lead into? That leads into an area we call a meditation circle. And it's just a quiet, safe, peaceful, secure space. So these windows are symbolic of the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Yeah, that's what I thought. And this little crucifix, this has been in my family since the 1930s, and faces to Jerusalem. 
and the big cross on the front of the building faces to the North Star. What's the uh, wave in the floor there? We call that level the Mother's Circle. There's a statue of the Blessed Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. You know, no Mary, no Jesus. Right. Circle. And a symbol on the ceiling, we call that the thread of life. And that's symbolic of the umbilical cord to honor all women. You finally got your own star, Pat. You, you ought to be in the picture. Where's the sign? You gotta put a sign on there, Pat. <laughs> Patrick Dearson and I'm from New York, I live in Manhattan. I uh, started riding motorcycles in 2000 and 2001. Thought it'd be an easier way to get in and out of Manhattan and absolutely fell in love with it. Um, it stopped being a uh, method of commuting and quickly became a hobby. And the freedom of it is just incredible. So even to this day, I've kept on with it and uh, it's really become more of a lifestyle than I do. George Ryan. I'm from Glen Cove, Long Island. I have a small business. It's a one-hour photo business. I started about 11 years old on a little Honda 50. And I've never stopped since. The reason why I still ride a motorcycle is that there's a kinship. There's a brotherhood. There's an exhilaration of being one with nature. You have the wind in your face. It, it's fulfilling. Almost a spiritual kind of a lifestyle. And that's the reason why we ride more side. You think we could stop somewhere and get some service done on my bike? Yeah, I, I know a buddy of mine, Scott Flagler, and uh, he probably hook us up. I'll give him a call. Hey, Scott. Hey, Kevin. How you doing? You remember Jim and George? That's yeah, right, guys. How's it going? Doing this good. is my brother Patrick hey, from New York. Hey, Patrick. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Jim needs an oil change for his V-Rod. Yeah, we can probably squeeze in an oil change. What kind of bike you have? 06 V-Rod. Okay, it'll be just about an hour. All right. All right, Thank we'll you. see you then. My name's Jim Podak. I'm from northern Florida. I started riding when I was about uh, eight years old and I've continued to ride because uh, I have friends that constantly call me and want to drag me places. And the reason that I ride this kind of bike is just because it gets my adrenaline flowing. And I have fun and then I can leave that with the motorcycle and then go to my job or whatever and then relax and be mellow because I know that eventually I'll get to go back out onto the motorcycle and become free again. And I just love it to death. Now you might make it to Key West. Hopefully. Huh? Yeah, it still needs more stuff done, but... All right. You get done with your trip, you need to get back in. Let's finish up the service and so you don't end up on the side of the road. I do towing though, so if you need it, just call me. Now that we're done taking care of Jim's chores, we hit the loop. It's on our way to Daytona. It's a really cool piece of riding. Starts off on A1A with the ocean on one side. You go over this little drawbridge. Yeah, they still got drawbridges. You go through this swampy marshland area. Looks like uh, Florida back in the dinosaur age. Then you end up going through the woods with these uh, oak-covered canopies. My kids call it the Hall of Trees. It really is pretty and worth the time. I don't think there's a human alive that can logically justify riding. We pay hard-earned money to buy a two-wheeled man-made machine, and we sit in this machine with enthusiasm and perform a high-speed balancing act, sometimes for hours on end.
Hey, George, didn't you have an uncle that had something to do with the early races here? Yeah, I had a great uncle. His name was Johnny Bruna. He was my father's uncle. He was the chief steward down here at Daytona Beach. He was the flag man. He used to start the race and portion the race and also stop the races and by waving the checkered flags and stuff. He was that short little guy with the white hat on with a big cigar sticking out of his mouth. Also, uh, in Edinburgh. Oh, yeah. It's a cold in England now? Yeah. Yeah. Especially up in North. Hey, don't mind if I interrupt you. Off of Key West, brother, for 20 bucks, man, the Grand Seas Resort is timeshare stuff, but you don't really have to do the timeshare stuff. It's just like, you know, uh, ironically, uh, we're all timeshare. Uh, it's a roof over your head for 20 bucks. So, anyway, you guys it's, take it easy and it's good. all good. Daytona Beach. <laughs> a group of bikers might have a common goal in the fellowship of being a biker, but we are all separate human beings. Our riding experiences can be completely different even though we have all traveled the same route together. When we prepare for a long ride, we feel anticipation. The first half hour or so, we usually feel caution, but then comes the groove. Being in the groove is where it all comes together. Your heartbeat and breathing seem to meld with the sound of the motor and smells and the sights you're taking in. This, for me, is the therapeutic part of the riding. Thank you, Miss Georgia. I got a rabbit up in my feet. Cheers. Cheers. Good for you. We have a first problem of the trip. His shifter isn't working, and uh, it's going to make life really interesting. Really quick. The fix he did originally was a little more cosmetic. He used what we like to call a uh, hefty bag twist top. Got it in there deep, double wind. Personally, I think it's where it went wrong. Double wind, not so much. You need to put a triple in there. How he done a triple, he would have fixed the problem. Unfortunately, here, what he's done, he's done a double wind. He's only cleaned out the grease that was actually making it shift. I don't know. I, I guess we're going to call somebody. What's the closest place that's a motorcycle mechanic? Well, an actual motorcycle mechanic we can get down the road here. All right, let's call him. Let them know that I'm stuck on a platform. Is there anything that you can do to help me with this, or? Uh, I don't know how to get it there, though. That's the problem. I can't get it out of fifth gear. Uh, what's the outcome? Yeah, really? He's going to come and, and pick us up. Looks like the ride with this nice man that's saving my life. What we're doing is replacing the shift arm on the transmission. It's a splined arm that goes on a spline shaft on a transmission. To get to it, we need to pull the inner and outer primary, the clutch and the primary drive, and then do a reverse procedure and put it all back together. Here's a standard question we're asking everybody. Why do you ride? Okay, hold on. Why do I ride? It's in my blood, just something I love. The sound of the engine, Vibration going through the bars just makes you feel good. It's all about the thrill. Well, he's got the uh, primary out. Yeah. How many chains? This is the culprit. Did you say what was wrong? It's a bad thing. Hold oh, still. You're, you got a black shirt on. Can't do that to Patrick. He's the star. All the girls love Patrick. Down here in South Florida, hunting the elusive land sea cow. Plumbing tattooed on your gut? <laughs> That's <crazy. laughs> he's, got, he's got the yellow submarine. Okay, let's ride. Let's ride. Listen, guys, we lost a lot of time here. 
Richie was really cool. He got my bike going so we can get out of here. But we really make, we've got to make up time. I, I called the hotel. They only have one room, so we're going to have to bunk together. That means you and Jim are going to have to sleep in the same bed. I Jim, got this. We definitely got to make up some time. we got to get to Miami before it gets dark and we're going to lose our rooms. All right, I got a little secret weapon I'm going to pull out here, so you're going to have to try to keep up with me on this, okay? Now, try to keep up with me. Let's ride. All right. Drive. Ocean Drive is a pretty magical place because you've got the historic district from the Art Deco architectural days when Miami was originally built in this, uh, this district with the original uh, neon on the buildings, kept a lot of the same architecture. If nowadays you have heavy Latin influence, a lot of obvious Cuban influence down here, a lot of Cuban food. They Crockett have... and tubs. Crockett and tubs. It's what a place. Right over there. <laughs> Where can we get Cuban coffee? One of the original Cuban restaurants down here on Ocean Drive. This place called Lario's. Wet Willie's right across the street from us is one of the famous bars down here. And this has become one of the biker hangouts. You have a lot of bike culture. You see a lot of uh, sport bikes. Obviously young up and coming trick bikes, things like that. Very cool place. I right, said so we go get some Cuban coffee. Let's go. Cuban coffee. Yeah. Cuban coffee. coffee. I've lived in Florida for over 30 years. There's many native plants to Florida that you get vital nutrition from and water. But they taste like crap. I'd much rather go to Sergio's. Here we come, boys. Yeah, baby, pork chunks. Man, that looks good. That looks great. Did you get Jim Bob? Yeah, that was good. Yes. Okay. Uh, to Miami. So guys, listen, I have an idea. Since motorcycle clubs, when you put the patch on your jacket, get you in trouble, you gotta flip them, you get beat up. I was thinking instead of a motorcycle club, we become a sports team. A let's ride sports team. And we make jerseys up. This will be we're not wearing colors, you know? What do you think, huh? <laughs> You're a moron. That's one Maduro penalty. <laughs> yeah, what's next? Bongs? I mean, you stupid, stupid man. I think my wife would just think you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Dude, I thought we were going to Fantasy Fest. Fantasy Fest? At least it's not hot out. I just wanted to go to Fantasy Fest. Who the hell is this guy? At least it's not hot or humid. Yeah, tell me about it. Look at this thing, dude. I'm swaying like a whore in church. Well, should we go find him? I think we better. Let's go. Tell me what the hell is going on around here? Uh, I, 
And my back was really sore. Omar was going. An hour and a half. And you're in a hot tub with two but, blondes. But, uh, Let's have I, his own fantasy post. Uh, this is my brother, Patrick. Patrick Hi, Omar. Hello, Omar. Patrick. Nice to meet you. I'm, Put your good leg on I, and I, let's I'm get okay. going. I, girls, they have to go. I have let's to ride. Go. Come on. I have to go. Omar, I gotta get out of here, man. I, I don't want to go. I want to stay here with the girls. Omar's gonna play some pretty songs. Sing a pretty song. All right, gentlemen, here it is. The bat roost, built in 1929. I think it's like the hydrial status bat roost is what it's called. The uh, what? <laughs> hydrio, hygio, <laughs> what? Hi, hygio. Hydrostatic static bat roost. Hydrostatic bat roost. <laughs> Built 1929 by R. Perkins. Uh, he, R. Perkins. R. Perkins. R. Perky? Perky. Oh, Richter Clyde Perky? Yeah. Wow. Yeah! <laughs> Anyhow, he built it to get rid of the mosquitoes in the area so the guy could build a resort. Can the bats actually roost in there? Yeah, it's got like little slats in there. He built it, brought in 3,000 bats from overseas. They only lasted here three, three days. And they all flew home, they said. So you're telling me that there's not one bat in this place? No. Nope. So what are we doing here? It's an antique. Ah. I'll tell you what we're doing here. We're getting bit up. Getting eaten alive. I know. My mosquito. Come on, let's ride. Let's ride. Let's ride. Where are we? The southernmost point, man. What is that? I thought we were going to Fantasy Fest. Yeah. But this is the southernmost point. Kevin, I thought we were going to Fantasy Fest. This Hello. makes you the southernmost idiot. This is a landmark. Cuba's only a few miles that way. Can we just touch this thing, have a moment, and move on? No, I, nobody appreciates anything I do, I tell you. All right, good. The southernmost, let's ride. <laughs> let's ride. Gentlemen, welcome to Fantasy Fest. More important, welcome to the West. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is key lime pie on a stick, frozen, cool. dipped in chocolate, and this is a key lime. Cool. Oh, baby, right now. Here we go. The official jersey is what we're talking about. Jim, your official number is 711. Now, I just picked the numbers that came to my head. George, your official number is 0.04. Patrick, your official number is 007. <laughs> 007, baby. It should be double 14. Me, Some places get a my official number is 69. <laughs> Yeah, baby, we got our Let's Ride Wiffle Ball theme shirts. Now we can fly under the radar. Let's go. Not that I'm ungrateful, but I'm going to get my ass kicked. Gentlemen, let me show you how it's done. This is it. Free body painting. Free body painting. Take your clothes off, we'll paint your body for you. It doesn't cost you a thing. It doesn't cost you a dime. Save hundred dollars. You can save right here. Hundred dollars. Free body paint. Step right up. This is joking. Oh. You're a guy. Get out of here. <laughs> uh.
How am I doing? 